Hello, uh, welcome back to my video lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to discuss the bus encoding concept. Why we need to encode? Uh, we need to encode the bus because whenever the data transmission takes place uh, from uh, the internal circuitry of the chip to the I/O pad or from the I/O external devices to the processor, uh, there is a lot of power being consumed. This is because the intrinsic capacitance of the system level buses are of larger magnitude than the internal loads of the circuit. So as the capacitance is increasing, the power consumption is also increasing for every transition. So reducing the number of transitions will definitely help you reduce the power consumption. So reducing the number of transitions that is switching activity uh, at the processor's I.O. interface uh, will reduce the power. So before transmitting the data, if you encode to have less number of transitions, that will definitely be a good idea. Now a decoder is used at the receiver end, which is you have encoded your data and sent over the buses at the other end there will be a, a decoder uh, to decode the encoded data and uh, to remove undesired correlation among the data bits or to introduce uh, controlled correlation we need to have a bus encoding concept now the concept of bus encoding is explained here demonstrated here See here, uh, here you can see the sender uh, who have n, y, n uh, bit wide data to be transmitted to the receiver. Now this receiver will also receive need the n bit wide data. This data after encoding may be n or it may be changed to m bit data the data is transmitted at the receiver end this is the receiver section this receiver chip will first decode the encoded data it is encoded marf data that will be decoded then given to the receiver in its original form this is how the data trans data encoding and decoding is done now as just now i have told you if n bit wide data is sent throughout the channel and uh, till the receiver there is no change here in the number of bit or the bit length then it is called as non redundant if you are changing the bit length here by any technique then it is called as redundant data see the non redundant coding an n bit code is translated into another n bit code length is maintained constant then it is called as non redundant coding redundant means if two n different n bit words are mapped to a larger set of m bit to m words then n bit length data is mapped to m bit length data then it is called as redundant coding that means m will be greater than n for example a 8 bit data is encoded into 10 bit or 12 bit data that is called as redundant coding the encoder or decoder may be memory less or may use memory elements it is not important that they must have a memory element it may be memory less here no additional lines for sending the chip of the uh, chip data is required here some additional uh, lines may be required to transmit the data the first uh, concept of bus encoding technique is gray coding this is uh, a family member of non-redundant codes. 
Now, this gray coding, you might have heard about gray coding in uh, switching logic, switching theory, where uh, you need to reduce where you need to reduce uh, a equation using k maps in k map uh, you use gray coding to to reduce the equation now here also you can see the gray coded 4 bit data this is 4 bit odometer 0 1 2 3 4 5 till f that is after gray coding that data is been converted like this. Now what is the specialty of gray code is in gray code consider any two uh, consecutive data lines. In these two words you may have a Hamming distance of only one. See here 0 0 same 1 1 same 1 1 same the last bit is 0 and 1. So here the distance between these two is 1. The distance between this and the other one is also again 0 0 one one uh, last digit also one one but then this digit is third digit is zero one one zero so that is you consider any two lines you will find only one uh, bit distance that means how many transitions uh, per uh, each day each bit each uh, data that is only two transitions so here you have reduced the number of transitions thereby reducing the power consumption the number of transitions or binary representations is 30 and the number of transitions for gray code will always have uh, 16 transitions that is for a 64 bit data line. Now the power consumption in this case will be reduced by 50 percent. A gray code encoder and decoder modules are shown here which are memory less devices. Uh, using some three XR gates, you can develop, you can convert a 4-bit binary code, see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4-bit. Four a 4-bit binary code, you can convert uh, into gray code using this circuit. Using this simple circuit, you can convert it to gray code. Now, this gray code, again, may be converted back to binary code, which is called as decoder. Encoder converts binary into gray. Decoder converts gray into binary. This is how having uh, this gray code can be used to reduce the number of switching activities and to reduce the power consumption in bus encoding concept. Next technique is one hot coding. One hot coding is a concept developed to reduce. Uh, switching activity in all possible situations. This is also a non-redundant technique where uh, the n-bit data word maps into a unique code of m-bit data size. Uh, so the number of bits n, for example, if it is 4-bit system, 2 power 4 is 16 it is mapped into 16 bits. Now this as the name suggests one heart see here uh, out of all the bits any one line will be one all the other lines will be zero. By just seeing tenth line you need to decode it as one zero one zero which is ten. For example if it is eight one triple zero is eight. If it is fifteenth line FFFF is fifteen. So, by seeing the number or the position of the line, uh, line which is high, if second line is high, it is 0, 1. Like that, you can convert decode. The encoder receives n bit data as the input and produces 1 on the ith line where i is 0 to 2 power n minus 1. When ith line uh, is the binary value of the n-bit data words. So this is how, without using uh, much engineering here, both encoder and decoder can be made memoryless devices. Now the uh, switching activity reduction is by 75%. And here also the number of transitions 
for any pair of data words, any pair of data words, you can see 1 to 0, 0 to 1. Because, for example, if uh, in this uh, time t you are transmitting 8, number 8, so 8th line will be high. In the next uh, consecutive uh, time slot, you have to transmit number 9. That means you have to reset 8th line, set 9th line. Only two transitions are uh, taking place. Only two transitions are taking place. That is the only two transitions. The disadvantage is number of lines in increases exponentially as 2n. That is a problem. The system will become expensive uh, than the benefit of uh, having less power consumption. This is the block diagram which we just have seen. The next one is uh, redundant codes. Uh, the redundant, this is also bus inversion coding is also a kind of redundant code technique. See, this is previous data. Bus T minus 1 is previous data. This is present data. Previous data, present data. It uses only one redundant bit that is M is equal to N plus 1. If it is, uh, if your data is, a, is of 8 bit wide, after bus inversion coding, it will be a plus one nine bit wide. The Hamming distance between data, the present data and the previous data is more than n by two, for example. That means if you are using an eight bit word, the previous data and present data differ in Hamming distance by more than four. Then complement of data is sent. Why? When you complement it, if it if the distance is five, when you complement it, it will become to three. Because in eight bit wide data, when five bits are changing, definitely you can say, if you invert it, it will have only three changes. That is the concept here. Uh, it is complemented and sent uh, over the data bus. If having distance is less than n by two then the data is sent as it is. The redundant bit P is added to indicate if the bus B of T is an inverted version of data T, data or not. Understand? Bus of T is representing data of T at the same time. If it is inverted version, then uh, the bit P will be made high or uh, low that will be representing the inverted version of the data. The problem with this system uh, with this uh, concept bus inversion coding is it cannot be used to represent the address bus. When you invert the data automatically the address will change. So you cannot use it for address, you can use it only for data. The concept is represented in the block diagram. Here is a sender. The data has to be sent to this receiver. Now this m n bit wide data is now made n plus one bit wide. This is bus of t. The previous data is bus of t minus one. The previous data. It will be checked and depending upon the uh, distance the data will be sent, inverted data or direct data will be sent. That is called bus inversion technique. Now, another technique is T0 coding. The transition uh, T0 coding is which requires a redundant line increment. INC redundant line is required here. INC signal is equal to 1 it implies that a consecutive stream of address addresses is generated. A consecutive scheme of addresses is generated. When two addresses are not consecutive, the INC increment signal is low. When address is just the consecutive of the present one, then increment bit will be high. That means you need, you need not to send 
all the data once again you just need to send increment signal there decoder will increment the data automatically so that is very simple concept so these are the different kinds of bus encoding techniques that we can use in our chips to reduce the power consumption i hope you you understood this topic uh, if you have any doubt you can leave a comment thank you